What remains after all experience is done. That's the right answer. Nothing. Which is the source of everything. The enabler of everything. The infinite one enables everything. It never becomes anything. It only enables everything. Does that make sense? It's like, uh, sometimes we use the analogy of throwing a tennis ball to your dog. The dog kind of is the person that sees the tennis ball and chases it because it doesn't know any better. It's kind of stupid, but so sweet, you know, innocent. <laughs> but source is like you throwing the ball, right? It's like you tossing a creation into the field of life. And then the personas start running after it. So you're like source that throws the ball, but it's never attached to the ball. Now, you cannot continue to be the enabler of experiences if you were to be dragged along with the ball. If you were actually attached to your creations, you would not be a very efficient creator because you would become your creations and you'd be stuck in that moment. So you're like the releaser of creations. You're like the enabler. You enable these things. But you will always remain free from the things you enable beyond the grasp of the creations that you toss into existence. That's one of the senses that comes with it. Another sense that comes with it is that nothing ever happened. <laughs> Not really. Nothing ever happened. And it kind of takes the edge of, takes all edges off of this experience. Ah, oh, nothing ever happened. Yay! So now I can have fun. Because nothing ever happened anyway. Now, be careful not to lose your integrity and your morality, but you won't, because you're all good people. But you can have the realization that nothing ever happened. When you have the realization that nothing ever happened, because of this intangibility that's now present, this, this ingraspability, this transparency that's now your awareness, you have now become not just awareness, but transparent awareness. Awareness transparent to its source, its enabler. In that mode, in that state, which is not a state, it's already here. It's freer than you can think of. It feels from that point of view like nothing ever applied to itself. To you as the infinite creator, to you as the one, to you as source, nothing ever applies. You see, everything can happen to creation. But it, again, it happens to the ball, it happens to the playing field, it happens to whatever you're enabling. It doesn't actually happen to you. Nothing can happen to you. Because, quite frankly, you're nothing. So nothing can happen to nothing. It's very hard for something to happen to nothing. So nothing <laughs> ever happens to nothing. Everything always happens to everything. Now, the liberating quality of this is that you can start to see and experience directly that <clears throat> whatever it is you're experiencing applies to consciousness. All the suffering you've done, thank you very much, has only ever applied to consciousness itself. It has never applied to the Absolute. You see, the Absolute has never blinked at any moment in your life. And it will continue to never blink at anything you ever experience. Oh my God, this experience is so intense. can't get out of it. That's great. It applies to consciousness, not to you. So no need to change your experience. Because everything applies to consciousness. But you are, quote-unquote, aware of consciousness. And you can see that con even consciousness does not touch you. You can be with or without, beyond or engaged in. Everything that has ever occurred has occurred inside of consciousness. So who does an experience belong to? Every experience you've ever had belongs to that which is aware of the experience. Let that do the suffering for you, or the joy, or the happiness, either way. But see that it applies to the consciousness that's generating these experiences. It doesn't apply to you as the infinite. That's why it's peaceful beyond peace. Because peace is basically found in the energetic experience of the substratum of consciousness itself. The energy, the presence energy that makes up everything. Or the sense simply of spacious awareness. That's where we find a sense of peace. But as soon as we lose the recognition, or we're not yet fully convinced that that's always already here, we lose the sense of peace. But then it's back again. Oh, and it feels so good. But not really, because we're holding on to it. We're identified with peace. Now what if even peace would not apply to you? <sighs> now there it's peace. The peace of not even having to be peaceful or not. 
doesn't really matter because it doesn't apply to you to begin with. Nothing ever happened to you. Everything always happens to consciousness. Nothing ever happens to you. Everything always happens to consciousness. Nothing ever happens to you. So you are the infinite. Now this is like penetrating from the inside out, penetrating a little hole in the sphere or bubble of consciousness itself. Consciousness assumes itself to be the absolute, to be something, to be everything. And in a way it is, because everything applies to consciousness. But beyond everythingness, there is something else that's way faster, way more ingraspable. Beyond, uh, beyond everythingness, there is, again, neither perception nor non-perception. So I'm not saying that's non-perception. I'm saying it's neither perception nor non-perception. This is kind of fun. Some people are like, yeah, that's cool. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's all fine. It's a little technical, the way I'm talking about it. Just use the methods to make it experiential, even though it's non-experience, in a way. What the fuck? Just do the methods, do the exercises, and see what happens. And if all else fails, just blame it on the fact that your apple is not yet ripe. <laughs> and enjoy the ripening presence and just be still. Be quiet. I know that I am. Until the I am is resolved and emptied out and made transparent to its source. The ingraspable. The infinite. But this is a way freer way of recognizing or knowing yourself because... It doesn't go by any laws, it doesn't go by any rules, it doesn't have to be present, it doesn't have to be aware. <clears throat> it doesn't mean that awareness will not be there, available. It will always be available. In fact, it's always going on, whether or not you're engaged with it, whether or not you're associated with it. It is still there. But it becomes so on the edge of your horizon that to you it feels optional. It no longer feels like you have to be associated with everything that happens inside of your awareness. Cool, that's teaching number two. Congratulations. Teaching number three, so teaching number one I call enlightenment, teaching number two I call infinity, teaching number three, and again this is sort of in the order in which I started to embody these things. And I think the order is somewhat relevant for most people, so I'll keep it in that order. The third teaching is that of empowerment. Now some people just start with empowerment and that can work. It wasn't my path because I was seeking for enlightenment, I was seeking for absolute answers. Um, some people just want to feel better, which is great in a sense, that's what I wanted too. But I had more curiosity, I had more, I wanted the knowledge, I wanted the awareness, I wanted the understanding. I wanted to penetrate those secrets, I didn't just want to feel good, yay, this teaching of this dude works, so I'll just continue to work with that teaching. No, I wanted to penetrate all these secrets, these layers, so that I can place every single little thing in its proper place and feel like I'm being thorough. Now, why did I want that? I wanted that because I came here to be teacher. Very simple. So I had this innate drive to penetrate these secrets so that I can share them <clears throat> with other people. So you don't have to necessarily do the same. You don't have to be a yogi about it. In fact, for most people, it's not that healthy or relevant. I see a lot of people trying to sort of do what I did, trying to be the yogi, trying to be the, be the I don't know how to say it, student, scholar, of all of this mysticism. And quite frankly, often it's just a, a form of vanity or idle curiosity, and not really something that's innately relevant to their blueprint for this life. And you see, everything that you'll realize is already realized anyway, so you don't have to worry about it too much in this life. This whole story about you have to realize it, otherwise bad things will happen for the next thousand lifetimes is not necessarily true. Wait, so what are you saying? Is it true? Is it not true? Not necessarily. <laughs> it can be, but not necessarily. I don't want to take away all the mystery, except for myself. What's more relevant for most people <clears throat> is to gain some level of clarity and understanding of penetrating. And my understanding is still, is still ever-growing. It's just you know, that of a toddler on the cosmic scale of realization. But for a human being, it's pretty good. So, it's but it's not that relevant for everyone to know all these details specifically. So don't bother yourself with them too much because if it doesn't feel natural, if it doesn't feel relevant for you to have that yogic style about it, it might simply not be relevant for you and you might be working against your own stream. 
Your stream might simply want to express something in his life. Maybe he wants to write a few books and, and meet all these people and, and, and enlighten their world simply by being a bright spark of creation. So honor your natural blueprint. Honor what feels like it's part of your resonance. There's a lot of people that are convinced by spiritual teachings and teachers that they have to study a particular path because that's the way to enlightenment. That's the truth. No, I've seen many people <clears throat> mess themselves up severely, energetically speaking, out of that idea of the teacher knows what he knows and my path is to follow the path of the teacher or to say what he or she says I should realize. But you should always check in with yourself and follow your own resonance. That's what I did. It just so happens to look the way it looks for me. It doesn't mean it should look that way for you at all. So if I were to go against my resonance, which I tried, which I tried in various ways for years, but I could never do it for very long in each of these disciplines, then I would simply make myself sick. I would simply make myself not enjoy my experience here. I would simply make myself a martyr of some kind. And my knowledge at that point would be dead. It would be repetition. It would be read from a book. It would not be alive. It would not be infused with relevance. It would not be infused with the freshness. So be fresh. Be you. Follow your resonance. You don't need to know everything I know. You don't need to know everything the Course of Miracles is saying. You don't need to know everything the Bible is saying. You don't need to know everything that the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali are saying. You don't need to know these things. Unless it really resonates for you to know these things and contemplate on it. But for most people, what's way more important is to simply live their life. It's to simply enjoy their life. No, not necessarily in total ignorance and non-investigation. But to not make too big of a deal out of that whole self-realization thing but to simply take it naturally. Take it moment by moment as resonance, as intuition draws you in. You see, the quickest, most efficient way to actually draw yourself into all the realizations you can ever have and desire and that are truly relevant for your beingness, your soul at this time, the quickest, most efficient, most natural, healthiest, joyful way to do that is actually to follow the breadcrumb trail of your joy, of your resonance, of your excitement. Because you see, it is your higher self, which already knows all these things that you're catching up with and then claiming as your own realizations. Oh, look what I realized. Now I'm enlightened. It's like, yeah, yeah, get over yourself because it's already here. It's not a big deal. It's really not a big deal. All the self-realization stuff is easier than you think. In fact, the easier you allow it to be, the easier you'll experience it to be and the quicker you'll actually get to a sense of conviction. 